Um, this is courtesy of Hypebeast regarding Supreme. And it says Supreme reports decreased value revenue in financial year ending March 2023. It says in the fiscal year ending March 2023, Supreme reported revenues of 523 million, marking a free 38 million decrease from the same figure of the same year period, according to parent company VF Corp's report. The streetwear label's revenue results fell short of the VF Corp's 600 million US target by a significant margin. Additionally, Supreme's net income took a hit, tallying 64 million down from last year's 82 million. VF Corp, which runs its own brands, including Dickies, um, North Face, Vans, and Timberland, acquired Supreme in a 2.1 billion US deal. And in the 2020, the brand sale led many fans to question whether Supreme would still be able to maintain its place in streetwear. In February of last year, the imprint appointed them to as Tremaine Emery's creative director and the goal of bolstering its roots throughout the progressive look. Notably, Supreme's brand utilizes a different business model than the rest of the course, facing unique risks due to its own focus on frequent weekly limited edition drops across its direct to consumer channel. According to the report, VS failure to make the necessary adaptations to its operations to address these characteristics complexities and market dynamics could have a effect of vf's revenue business tradition conditions sorry and results of operations while supreme's declining for revenue could re result in a unique business model it also has been indicative of the fashion's uh rapidly shifting trend cycle that has expanded many luxury focus outside of streetwear in recent years so what's my opinion on this I'm not surprised, but I also don't think it's as doom and gloom as people are making it as. I know people like Bobby, you know, Bobby Hundreds was kind of, I felt like he was, he made the post that kind of felt like, you know, he wasn't really saying anything, but kind of saying something where I felt like he was sort of like dancing on their grave um, a little bit with Supreme, kind of like saying, hey, you know, finally, you know, real life is sort of caught up with them because, you know, maybe the Hundreds have been facing, you know, the challenges of a ever changing economy and world, whereas Supreme kind of existed in a bubble for a very long time where just things just kept working out for them year on year but now maybe with the investment and uh you know with, with yeah with the investment and the targets being what they are they've now kind of semi fallen short but i don't think it's that big of a deal because i think in general supreme has way more product than they did many years ago when i started purchasing it they have way more stores way more flipping you know units probably get made per item um the skus are probably increased across the board so it's no surprise that the targets aren't being hit because there's just way too much stuff out there that they're selling and pushing every single season and it's just not enough kids out there to kind of make those targets make sense in a general scheme of things especially when you consider you know the cycle of brands and the fact that a lot of the i feel like a lot of the streetwear consumer base are kind of spread across different sort of scenes and labels and whatnot. It's not all just kind of concentrated with the big hitters. There are some kids out there that just specifically only buy from particular kind of Instagram based streetwear brands. There are some that kind of stick to the heritage stuff. It's all kind of spread out all over the place. I think because of that, the brand loyalty that kind of used to exist before when I was buying shit doesn't exist nowadays. Kids just mix and match. They do different things. They wear different things. They get their stuff from different places. Some kids specifically only buy their stuff secondhand from Depop and other sort of places like eBay and whatnot. So all that stuff is definitely going to affect um spots like supreme and what they're doing in terms of records going forward what i still think is admirable about supreme all these years on is the fact that they're still the kind of i feel like one of the kind of trend leaders they're still one of the kind of people who sets the tone they're still one of the brands that essentially has their finger on the pulse they have a really uncanny ability to be able to kind of handpick people who are going to continue that beat they never seem like they're trying too much never seem like they're trying too hard never seem like they're off pace they always seem like they're kind of on point and the good example for me is always kind of be the skate team you look at the skate team and how that's evolved over the years and who's involved and who kind of reps it and it's always kind of changing but it's always got their finger on the pulse of kind of who's next and who's coming up and who's going to represent the brand the best so i think they do a really good job of that going forward so i don't think this is going to really impact them the long way the only thing that's concerning about the report having read it is that it kind of sounds like vf corp did what most companies do when they buy you know brands and stuff or buy companies big corporations right uh sorry big corporations big funds whatever they may be they buy companies and they usually let you do what you want in the hope that you're going to reach the targets then if you don't reach the targets, they come in and start fiddling around with shit, start reorganizing stuff, maybe start, you know, having a bit more say in certain things, giving notes. So that's the only thing that's a bit concerning. 
from what I can read in that, you know, brief summary from Hypebeast, it sounds like they might now start thinking, okay, you didn't hit the targets, doing it the way you want to do things. Now we're going to do it the way we do things with all our brands that we kind of own and see how that kind of goes. That might be the only thing. And then also that might then end up spelling the end of some people's careers who've been working there for a while because, you know, some people are going to be in stepping on your toes. You're going to be micromanaged and whatnot. You're going to have different people to report to. All those things could really negatively, negatively affect people's, um, you know, sense of work, whatever else they do when they go to those kind of places. There's anything that's a little bit concerning if you're working on the inside. But as a consumer, as a customer, um, I'm so happy with what they do. I still think they do great work. And I'm definitely still buying fucking Supreme, even to this day. I buy a lot of stuff still from the online store. I buy a lot of stuff on Depop. I buy a lot of stuff on flipping eBay, on Vinted nowadays as well, all those kind of platforms. Um, because I feel like a lot of the stuff that I kind of get for the most part, especially after the fact, um, is usually the better product is less flashy and shit and it's stuff that i would definitely can wear with loads of different outfits and it feels like it can kind of grow with me as i kind of progress in the scene and whatnot so yeah i'm definitely on it so big up supreme long may they rain long may they rain